in life through busyness and through external activity, uh, we can miss, you know, we can miss uh, the beauty of the simplicity of moments that life is offering us. And I think that's the um, beautiful uh, blessing of having a practice is it starts to tune our awareness or our attention uh, to this moment here now. I like when you call it a practice mm-hmm. because that's something that I can get my my head around, like soccer practice. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Tony Robbins. Welcome to the podcast. Listen, for the last 45 years, yes, 45 years, I've been focused on the subject of how do you help people increase the quality of their life, whether it be increase the quality of their business or their relationships or their finances. And you know, one of the things I've learned is that communication is the basis of all relationships, whether it's business or personal. And we're all great communicators when we're not stressed. But we live in a world where the demands are constant and we kind of get trained into having that part of our nervous system known as the sympathetic system. If you don't know it, it's the part that makes you go, 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 go. It's that adrenalized part kind of dominate our lives. And one thing I've learned is in business, for example, You know, the chokehold on the growth of a business is always the leader. It's the psychology and the skills of the leader. And in your personal life, (laughs) the quality of your life really comes down to the quality of your communications, your relationships. What makes somebody a great communicator is being able to hear what's not being said. But when you're stressed, you don't hear other people. You're not even able to listen. You think you're listening, but you're really just trying to get the job done. And so one of the most valuable skills is to manage our psychology. And I always say psychology is 80% of success and skills 20%. And I think meditation, for me, when I used to hear about meditation, my mindset was it's a waste of time. I mean, my meditation would be going on a run, which, by the way, is a form of meditation. I like to be physical, I like to be in movement, kind of a dynamic meditation what I do. Sitting still to meditate just didn't seem real to me. It just felt like a waste of time. And trying not to think thoughts, well, good luck with that. But I started to create a way that worked for me, which I call priming. And I do it every single morning, no matter how busy I am. I know how busy you are too. And so you don't have to be a meditator. You don't have to have some giant spiritual outcome. But if you want the best you to show up for your family, for your friends, for your business, and for yourself, I think it's important to find a daily practice. And meditation comes in many forms. I mean, it's really important for us to realize that in life, you don't experience life. None of us do. We experience the life we pay attention to. We experience what we focus on. You know, the human brain is basically, uh, has three skills. It distorts, it deletes, and generalizes. If you're really angry, you have to delete all the things you could be happy about. If you're really, really happy, you have to delete all the things you could be pissed off about. And so whatever we focus on, wherever our focus goes, that's where energy flows. And learning to direct our attention or our focus is really what this is about so that you experience the quality of life that you really desire and deserve for yourself and for the people you want to serve. And that only happens if you can do a reset. And so one of the best people I know of on the planet to talk about this, of course, is my wife, Sage. She is a walking, living, we call her Sage for a reason. <laughs> She's, she just has this beautiful state about her. I am the, the largest beneficiary of this woman's gorgeous love, but her ability to stay in the, the center of things. And we've traveled together of my 45 years for 22 years in the most crazy way. Most people would never be able to handle it in a trillion years, going you know, to 115 cities in a year and sometimes 12, 16 countries and be in every time zone and still be in your center and give your best. And so I would really want her to share with you this along with my partner in crime here, Mary B. They're the two best people I know to share this with you. But I wanted to let you know how important I think this subject is before they begin with you. They're going to they're gonna walk you through many ways to look at this that I think will be really useful. But I know a lot of people, I know if someone said, oh, this is going to be a podcast on meditation, I would, I'd be out of here in the past. But today, I don't look at it as that. I think it is... This is a podcast on how to direct your attention because right now that's the most valuable thing you have. I mean, look around. We're no longer in an information society. That died a long time ago. There's too much information. We're drowning information. We're starving for wisdom. But that wisdom is within you when you can calm the mind and when you can stop giving everyone else your focus and attention and direct it to what matters most. So without further ado, let me pass the ball to my two favorite humans on the planet, Sage Robbins and Mary B. Wow. 
I'm touched, Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. And I You're just amazing. want you to know that my attention's on you in this moment, and my heart is flooded, and I love you so dearly. <laughs> oh, I'm so spoiled rotten. I'm the luckiest man alive. <laughs> I love you with all my soul. So I know I'm, I'm, ha I'm passing you to someone who will be beloved to you because she is a beloved human being. She treats all human beings with such love and trust and respect and honor. God comes through her only always. So, And Mary B is absolutely the same. This is our our family going out there to have an impact together. So the ball is yours. Take it away. I love you. Thank you, honey. Love you, sweetheart. It is May of 2022, which means it is World Meditation Month. Did mm -hmm. you know that, Sage Robbins? You know, you informed me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> well, we are like hurtling toward the halfway point of 2022. Can you believe it? Like no, it goes so fast. It feels like we were just in 2020. <laughs> Why does time go so fast? Could it perhaps be because we need a little more mindfulness? <laughs> we need a little more meditation in our life. If I was a little more present, would it feel like I was getting everything out of these days? What do you think? Well, gosh, that's a beautiful question. <laughs> um, you know, I think the gift of meditation is it does. It brings us here now. It's calling our attentions back, our attention back to this moment. Uh, you know, in life, through busyness and through external activity, uh, we can miss. You know, we can miss uh, the beauty of the simplicity of moments that life is offering us. And I think that's the um, beautiful uh, blessing of having a practice is it starts to tune our awareness or our attention uh, to this moment here now. I like when you call it a practice mm -hmm. because that's something that I can get my, my head around like soccer practice. <laughs> Let me just start by saying, we jumped right in here and I'll start by saying, one of us is a meditator. The other one would like to be, but admittedly, <laughs> it's like, I think it's great, although I don't do much of it myself. But I thought that we, we thought that that would be relevant to mm -hmm. you out there listening. Cause I think some of you listening will be diligent seasoned meditators and others will be more of my camp. Like it's halfway through the year. My resolution was to meditate and I still haven't done it. So <laughs> Sage, you are the resident expert in this conversation. Well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say certainly I'm an expert. I feel like a baby on the path. And, uh, but you know, I'm happy to share my experience and I definitely have a passion for it. And a lot of times I think when, you know, I remember before I started and I thought like I had this identity, I'm not a meditator. Um, and yet we're all meditative in moments, you know, there's times where we slow down. And I think when we slow down, our energies naturally come towards our center and, uh, whether it's, you know, going for a walk on the beach or whether it's looking, uh, at the waves or, or, you know, watching your puppy breathe or play with a toy in the morning or being with your little one, there's those moments where life slows down and there's a different level of connectivity to the moment. And I think that that is meditation. I watch our, you know, our little one, our daughter every day. And honestly, she has so schooled me. I mean, she'll literally sit in her high chair sometimes and just gaze off into, uh, I mean, into nothingness. And I don't know what she's experiencing, but it's a very, it amazes me because that's a very meditative state. I, mean, I, I can do that. Well, I can and do you that. do, but you do. And I think that yeah. that's a beautiful gift for those out there that are saying, I'm not a meditator or you, Mayor, that believes that you're not a meditator. There is the formality of, you know, having a sit or having an intention of sitting down. And we're going to certainly discuss that today. Uh, but gosh, I've done all sorts of meditations, walking meditations, uh, nature meditation, breath meditation, heart meditation, uh, you know, mindfulness meditations where that's more active. Uh, there's, you know, dynamic ones where you dance and, you know, you experience your energy up high and then you allow it to, you know, drop in. I think that, you know, life is diverse enough. And um, what's so wonderful, it, it's not one particular path for anybody. I think that's what's so beautiful. I think that's what's so meaningful about us coming together and having a conversation is, you know, we're coming together and bringing our life experience. I really recognize that I really believe we all are in moments uh, when we slow down enough to notice uh, what life is offering us here now. 
Okay, I have a few things to say to that. <laughs> okay. Number one, you and Tony often tease me that I'm kind of the slow one around here. Mm -hmm. In fact, my nickname, my mascot, my spirit animal is often the sloth. Yes. <laughs> which comparatively to Tony Robbins and Sage Robbins, I think I'm not doing so bad. It's all relative. It's beautiful. However, even as someone who whose nature might be a little slow and watery, I never, my thoughts seem to never move faster than when I actually sit down and try to meditate. Mm. And as Tony would say, with anything that you're undertaking, what's the first question you should ask yourself is what is your outcome? What is, what are, what's your outcome? Said differently, what's the result that you're after mm. when you sit down in that chair, kneel down, however you do it? Mm. What, it, what are you, I'm asking you too, oh. like what, do, <laughs> <laughs> what is the result that you're after when you mm. stand up for meditation 15 minutes later, how do you know that you've accomplished your, what you set out to do when you went in there in the first place? I don't know that it's necessarily a result um, per se. I think there's a lot that's happening in the realm of invisible forces. I mean, you had, yesterday we were having a conversation getting ready for this and you had mentioned that I think it was Stanford uh, had said that uh, meditation benefits uh, peace or, or affects your blood pressure. Every every great reputable mm -hmm. university has said it. Harvard said it, Stanford mm -hmm. said it, Oxford, anything, Mayo Clinic. It's There is no shortage of proof, mm. scientific evidence that mm. meditation is, it can lower your blood pressure, it can reduce your stress, it mm -hmm. can add gray matter to the parts of your brain where you want gray matter and take away it where you don't. Like it's... It's not like <laughs> I need another reason to do it. I'm mm -hmm. just not doing it. Yes. I just find every excuse and it's mm -hmm. often like, hey, I'm not good at this. Well, a couple of things. I want to, you know, I, I'd mentioned earlier about not necessarily having a result, even though I think there are many gifts of it. But the majority of the time, it's just to be here now and notice what this beautiful life is offering. Another is also, you know, helping to unravel thoughts you know, thoughts that are no longer serving and to meditate on one's, you know, my own response or reaction to something, uh, to have more of a sincere um, or broader perception of a moment or of a interaction. Uh, that's an active and a dynamic and a living meditation. Um, and I think that, you know, from that perspective, that helps to create space. So, you know, rather than result, maybe it's just the benefits and the gifts uh, there's tangible and intangible, and you can speak about the science, or I can speak about my experience. Um, but I think that there's, uh, I think when there's so much uh, demanding our attention externally, I think it's a beautiful gift to give to oneself to come back to this moment and to notice, even just to even close your eyes and to hear your own breath, you know, to connect to, I'm alive. <laughs> Here in this moment and my body's being breathed, that's a miracle, you know? And so sometimes it's the simplicity of, of that gratitude uh, that reconnects or recalibrates um, for myself. So I don't know if it's so much a result uh, as much as an experience. And that experience can be vast, uh, especially when you drop the expectation that it should be a something because mine might see it as a nothing. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know You're if that me translates. Feel better. You're making me feel better because you know me, I think, in life to be, I'm not a skeptical, cynical person. I am, in fact, irrationally optimistic <laughs> in most all other areas except perhaps meditation mm -hmm. because I sit down and when you talk about invisible forces, it's mm -hmm. like thoughts of sh sh certainly invisible forces. Mm -hmm. So the thought parade starts cruising by. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, oh, I got an itch mm -hmm. on my cheek. Oh, I can't, my back hurts. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just ex I, like, and then, and then it comes the self-judgment because it just feels like these excuses. And then it's mm -hmm. like, um, I can't meditate. That's it. I'm unlovable. Mm -hmm. I'm an imposter. I'm stupid. I mean, it escalates quickly. And I mm -hmm. suppose from what my limited understanding of meditation mindfulness is, is that's exactly the reason why we meditate in the first place is to become mm -hmm. aware of the craziness of our thoughts. You know, I think if we're honest, we've all been there. You know, we've all 
had those moments of beating ourselves up or had those moments of judging ourselves or judging another because mind judges, you know, it just goes, it yep. just, it's this constant, you know, narrative. And so, you know, I, I don't know, I think uh, adding that um, extra layer of, you know, uh, continual defense and trying to hold up an identity, there's so much, um, uh, you know, a phraseology these, these days is imposter syndrome. And it's so innocent because it's like, am I an, an imposter? It's like, no, I'm, I'm human. <laughs> I experienced this, that, and the other, you know, I've got a kind heart. I, I'm a love and I, I'm, I'm grateful and I appreciate life. And sometimes I can be frustrated or be selfish or be, because that's part of the human experience in a moment, yeah. you know, does that define me? No. You let it go and you come back home to our nature, which is love, which is joy, which is ease or grace and extend that. And I think we innately, internally, and in our nature, we're all that. It's just, you know, it gets covered with conditioning. It gets covered with wounds or life experience. And I think that's one of the gifts of this evolution of life is we all get to, you know, find our way back to a deeper truth and experience, uh, you know, a broader perspective and kinder reality of life. You you and Tony have a friend, Ellen Langer, mm. and I've heard her, she's, um, people call her the mother of mindfulness. Yes, she's a beautiful woman. And she is the first tenured uh, Harvard professor in the psychology, female Harvard pr professor, very bright woman. Mm. Um, and she, I've heard her say like, we're there, but we're not really there. Like mm -hmm. when, when someone has asked her what mindfulness is and mm. I certainly know that feeling and that's something like my outcome would be, I want that clarity of experience and clarity of mind and presence. Mm. Um, and so I don't know if mindfulness and meditation are kind of all in the same. I, I clump them all together. Yes. Um, I don't know. Tell me. Well, um, once again, I can only share my experience uh, but you know, when I started to meditate, to actually sit and have meditation and I'll share exactly what I've done, you know, um, at the beginning I would, you know, I, I had this expectation that it needed to be 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes and, uh, it didn't work for me so well in the very beginning. And so I would just close my eyes and tune in for maybe one minute or two minutes. And, you know, I, I literally think of it as like my moments of grace because it was just like, ah, oh, like taking that breath and, and, and feeling actually what was going on inside and noticing the sensations and just watching. But when my eyes are closed or if our eyes are closed and we're sitting in meditation and thoughts are arising rather than I shouldn't be thinking that, why am I thinking that? Why am I thinking about cleaning my closet or the sandwich I want to eat after this? Or I didn't call my mom today, you know? Um, and so if we, you know, can just watch that experiences, the thought comes up, you know, whatever sandwich I want to eat, or I want to clean my closet. And if we're not resisting that or making that wrong or demonizing that or labeling ourselves as not a meditator or thinking, why can't I do this? And I'm a failure, but just, you know, gosh, I, I, I want to have a grilled cheese then it's just the thought coming up and it goes. Yeah. And then the next thought comes up and goes. And we get to watch that experience. And it's interesting because it's it's really more observing than rather than the resistance and, and um, you know, attaching to an expectation that it needs to look a certain way. And once again, I'm only simply sharing my own experience. But when I did that, I, you know, it's like you can't effort meditation. You know, right. you can't like, it's not something to achieve. It's something to experience. And we're all really good at doing. I mean, you know, we'll sit for human beings. We as human beings will sit for like 20, 30 minutes and scroll through social media and be all else in somebody else's business, you know, and not think twice about, you know, just randomly or aimlessly, you know, looking at something on social media, but to actually say, okay, I'm going to sit and experience actually what's happening inside and connect to the gift of that reality. And I say gift because we're alive. I think that's, for myself, that's always been my through line. Like, what? Like my body is being breathed. I do nothing for that. You know, my heart is beating. That's a gift. If we wake up in the morning, that's a gift. And for myself, I think that's um, 
that's a through line of that gratitude or that awareness. Um, and then, you know, getting some distance of the judgments that are coming up and just watching the thoughts that come and rise. You know, Michael Singer is a very dear friend and he shares a beautiful uh, metaphor of, you know, thoughts are like clouds. And if we're outside and it's a beautiful sunny day and clouds come by, we don't judge that there's clouds, just the clouds come by. That doesn't change that it's sunny behind the clouds, you know, and the clouds are floating by. And I think if we, you know, having that metaphor so helped me when I would sit in meditation because as thoughts, you know, rose or, or came by, it was just like clouds floating by rather than those clouds. Why are the clouds there? I'm failing as a, you know, blue sky observer. The clouds shouldn't be there, which would be absurd. You know, we don't judge the experience of nature. We don't judge what, you know, is happening, like whether it's raining or, well, maybe we do at times. And if we do, we suffer. Yep. <laughs> does I, that, does I, that answer? That's helpful. And I think, um, you know, the clouds floating by metaphor is helpful because we did actually ask on Tony's social media accounts mm. to send in some questions. So I have a few and okay. hands down, the majority was, you know, let's see, D sharp in the house wrote, my mind always wanders. I found it, I find it hard to get back. Mm. Uh, how do I stop this? Jessica Lynn, how do I stop my mind from wandering and mm. focusing on one, one thing seems so hard. Maribel writes, what to do when your thoughts wander off. Mm. Uh, Alyssa, when it's difficult to find stillness in your thoughts actually cat how do you stay focused like that that, that i can't tell you. i mean there's hundreds in here mm. that's just a sampling but by far that's the most that's the most common one of just like these thoughts like <laughs> but they uh, to your point they're just like clouds in the sky yes. they are what they are mm -hmm. just notice them that word come when anytime i talk to somebody who's really seasoned in meditation it's like oh you just notice you just watch you don't judge them and it may, you make it sound so easy well because i think like if I'm sitting here and I close my eyes, I'm hearing my own body being breathed. Thoughts are coming and going. Maybe I'm hearing, you know, the fan here in the room or I'm feeling or I'm hearing your, you know, papers wrestling, whatever is happening. That's the experience that life is offering. And so if there's just that little bit of, I guess it's willingness to appreciate or to um, just allow and accept whatever is here and tuning into the sensations on the external, because normally there's so much happening out here that, you know, attracts our attention. I think it's really beautiful. There's an entire universe inside of us, <laughs> you know? I mean, a whole network of capillaries and veins and our heart pumping and our body breathing, that's unreal to me, you know? That's unreal to me. And then when it was just like, okay, embracing the reality, like thoughts just come and go. I mean, I think that's where we all meet in this human experience. We all have that reality, you know, we all have the reality of, of thoughts and, and they're universal thoughts that, you know, there's a collective mind. I mean, of, I think that's where, uh, that commonality, if you listen to any human being, it's like random thoughts come, you know, yeah. absurd ones that it's like, wow, what does this have to do with this experience here now? Uh, but it's there. And so it is, that's it. you know, and so it is. Yeah. And so for myself, I started out by doing, like, you know, like I said, one to two minutes. And I would do that maybe two to three times a day. Uh, sometimes I might go outside and just like take a breath and close my eyes and feel nature and feel the breeze on my face and just notice that sensation of the breeze on my face. A lot of times we go outside and you're having a conversation and, you know, we can miss or I can miss the actual sensation of, or a raindrops. You know, the other day I had, you know, our little one in my arms and I went outside and, you know, just watching her feel rain on her, on her face was beautiful. And so I, sh I was watching her and experiencing that. I was having, you know, my own experience and sensation of that. And it's like, oh, like we can miss so much. And I've missed so much in my life. And I think the gift, if you talk about a result, and I don't know that it's, um, you know, I'm struggling with the word result. So I don't know that that's the right phrase for me or right experience for me. Um, but experientially, I think the gift is um, being more awake and aware and alert to what's happening here now. And then if I'm in life and I feel a reaction or somebody says something to me and I feel entangled in a moment, you know, I think that's where the gift, like Ellen's work of mindfulness, it's like, okay, let's come back to this second here, this moment here and, and take a breath and, and tune in. 
Um, cause otherwise it's just, it's, it's one thing, it's another, and it's just like life happening. Uh, and like I said, we get so caught up in the busyness, um, and through busyness and my own life experience, um, we miss the nuances, we miss the sweetness. And I think that's, you know, as, as, you know, having a consistent practice and I'll, I'll share here my experience in this conversation. Um, there's more beauty uh, in the most simple things when before the simple thing might have happened and I missed, uh, I missed the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to zoom out for a second sure. because I want to give our listeners, those listening who might not know you say drop ins as well <laughs> as I do, you might be listening right now and going like, she's talking about the raindrops and the nuances of life. And I thought we were talking about meditation, which to some people looks like sitting on a pillow, closing mm -hmm. your eyes in a cave or- That too, that also, too. Also meditation, especially in the West, mm -hmm. I have to say has gotten real trendy mm -hmm. and everybody is in their you know fancy pants and their smoothies <laughs> and doing their meditation and- I don't know, like, like there's a part of me, I even feel it as I talk about it. There's a part of me that has like a, like not a resentment, maybe it is. There, mm -hmm. Like I feel something of like, is that the authentic experience that everyone is talking about? And even as we we want, um, and even as we talk about the expectations mm -hmm. of meditation, mm -hmm. like I, one expectation is, gosh, I wish like my thoughts could just calm down a little mm -hmm. bit and another is like oh i want to feel one with the universe and the blade of grass and you and me mm -hmm. and everyone we know my enemies and friends and the animals like i have big expectations and so i'm hearing you talk about the miracle of life mm -hmm. can we talk about um the full moon meditation yes that we did <laughs> uh <laughs> This again probably links back to my grand expectations for a mm. 10 minute meditation. Mm. Um, it was a full moon meditation. It was a full moon a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Many folks, there was the eclipse and, and it was this powerful energy and many folks do a meditation. And again, that can be a very trendy thing. And what I love about this is myself and Billy and Tony and Sage, Sage had brought it up and said, hey, do you guys want to have this meditation? So we all grabbed our little bean bags. We went out to the backyard, made a little semi-circle, circle of friends. And Sage had a little prayer book and it was really intentional. I think there was a lot of joy. And yet there's also a reverence for mm. this moon, <laughs> this <laughs> thing that shines in the sky. I could see how people believe that it was you know, godlike, like this thing that rises and especially in its full capacity, it's just, it's magnificent. And so, you know, Sage, beautifully, uh, you said prayers mm -hmm. and we held hands, all of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we, you asked us to close our eyes and we had kind of a silent meditation for maybe, what would you say? Five, I'd, 10, 15 I'd ten, minutes? I'd say 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. And we're under the moon and... I feel myself at the end of the 10 minutes. I haven't mm -hmm. told you this, mm -hmm. but at the end of the 10 minutes, I'm I'm like, man, has it been an hour? Like this, is, is she ever, I was just, what's going on? And I found myself like side eye, I'm giving tone side eye, is he awake? Yeah, he's meditating. Billy and, and Billy's like, how would you describe Billy? He's Tony's trainer and he's mm -hmm. like this muscly beef cake, pro I call him my little protein shake. And I'm like, come on, Billy's not meditating. He's not in it. And you close the meditation and I look over at Billy mm. and he opens his eyes and he is a hundred percent earnest. He's like, wow, like I forgot where we were right mm. now. And I had this feeling of like, what? <laughs> 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 like feeling left out mm. of like, he was like bodiless mm. and I was in my mind. Mm. Well, Billy, I love that man. He's one of my dearest friends. And, uh, you know, we've had so many conversations and talked about meditation and had this exact same dialogue of his frustration of like, you know, I sit and I'm, you know, minds are just, go, you know, mind is just going. And, um, but that night, I think, you know, that's the gift of this life is it's never the same. You know, this moment we're having right now, it's like, this is, 
we never will never experience this exact moment again. So to me, it feels like you have already reaped the gifts of meditation. And with that comes gratitude and awe and wonder for this experience of life because somehow you've gotten through, at some point, you get through the chatter and through the problems of small mind. Mm. And then it's like shoo, this, it opens your eyes. Some, and, and I think that's, if, you, if someone were to ask me, okay, Mary, like, what do you want? Why, mm. if you all of a sudden started meditating tomorrow, why would you? And it's like, I want, Tony sometimes talks about profound knowledge. And, you know, there's a lot of knowledge, small knowledge, but there's also these things that are these insights that forever, these breakthroughs mm. that change forever the way you live your life. Mm. And I do, I have a belief that meditation can get you there. And I think we're given examples of really bright, extremely creative pe people, artists, whether it's Steve Jobs or Ray Dalio or um, um, mm -hmm. naming names that might appeal to sort of our business minded or achiever audience that swear by meditation. So I know that there's I, I know that the treasure chest is the buried treasure I believe exists. Mm. And I hear you talk and it's like, she, okay, she's got it. She doesn't even know she's got it. Do you? Do you? Is well, it I, I don't know if it's got it because honestly, I still experience chatter. My mind can still get entangled. I feel frustration. I feel, uh, you know, I feel all the scope of human emotions. But I think that that's the gift of the practice. It's like, okay, we're all in this thing here in this human experience. It's a gift to be alive. And uh, mind chatter, as you say, you know, we'd all like to turn the volume down. Maybe that's, you know, more accurate than through it or, you know, I haven't mastered that. Um, and yet in a moment to come back to this moment and to question my thoughts uh, or to just notice uh, what I'm experiencing here now and maybe what I've missed, um, that broadens my perception in that moment and therefore life is more beautiful than it was the moment before because if I was believing a story or believing a thought or in my mind chatter I'm in that reality I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm not connected to the moment I, I don't know if that translates at all it does and I also am remembering what I was going to say about Sage anyway, Ross. this candle is really... <laughs> is it dangerous? Really smoking. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to oh, interrupt you. That's no, okay. I was going to uh, say, if you don't know Sage Robbins, like I am lucky to, let me tell you something about her. <laughs> she will, like sometimes we'll be at a seminar, at a crowded mm -hmm. conference in an airport, at a soccer game driving at red light <laughs> and I'll, I'll be talking to her and then I'll look over like mid sentence and her eyes are closed. And now I've come to realize like, she's not sleeping. She's not narcoleptic. <laughs> she is meditating and she'll like just be sitting there, eyes closed, kind of like, you know, warm smile on her face. And I'm like, she's just catching this moment. This yes. is, this is what, it, so what I love about that and what you have taught me already is that, you can do this anywhere. Yes. You don't have to be on a tasseled rug. No. On a nice pillow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm learning that from you. So when people are like this present moment, you could do it right now, whatever you're doing right now. You could, And I also like how you mentioned before, like it's whatever sounds that you hear, like yes. sometimes I am neurotic enough that I'll hear a sound and, and that will, I'll be like, oh, that's, that's distracted mm -hmm. me. I can't focus on my breath if I hear mm -hmm. that neighbor's dog barking and it's like okay just that's what that's what life is giving you right now yes. go with the neighbor's dog barking mm -hmm. go with your dog barking whatever <laughs> it is this is it go into it yes and notice where your mind goes and mm. see what thoughts come up then so I, I like i think theoretically i'm getting closer to an understanding and then at the same time it's like it, like you said it's not something you do it's not something you achieve it's not something you understand it's like this I don't know. What is it? Well, I think it's something that we are. And I think there's a remembrance through this process of life for us all. You know, I think there's an unlearning and a remembrance. And it's like even just earlier, just maybe a few moments ago, I heard a phone alarm go off. And uh, it's like, well, that's part of this experience right now. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. the smoke on this candle here, it's getting a little wily. That's 
part of our experience right now. Um, you know, if I think it shouldn't be happening, then I'm crazy. I'm suffering. You know, I, I, I think, you know, the gift of meditation, the gift of mindfulness, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's, I, I think it's coming experientially, it's coming back to more of our nature. Um, and that's more beingness, you know, and, um, you know, trust me, we've lived an incredibly full life. Uh, there's been a lot of doing and, um, you know, have experienced a lot of beautiful things in this life. And yet the states of beingness, and what I mean by that is it's not like when we're doing something, it's just, just being here now, um, and, and noticing and appreciating or just experiencing what this moment offers, I think, uh, rather than this moment should look different than what it is. That's when we miss the moment. And I think that that's part of a lot of, you know, the mind chatter was experiencing just, it's like if you close your eyes and you're willing to just, you know, for two minutes, for three minutes, experience what you experience and uh, not have an expectation then it's then whatever whatever you hear whatever whoever knocks on the door um you know whatever thought arises and falls it's just part of this orchestra of life that's happening part of like the clouds coming the sun going behind the clouds it's like it's perfect it's it's just this harmonious experience but it's not harmonious when you know we believe the thought that it should look different than what is here now that's the I mean, I, I, that is probably the most accurate way that I can describe meditation. Um, it's allowing, I don't even know if it's allowing, it's just appreciating, accepting, you can put any word of those, or just simply probably even more accurately, just watching or observing, you know, what is here in this moment. You sit there and you close your eyes and you stay focused and you don't fall asleep. Well, you know, focus seems once again so um, like uh, like to focus. It feel, I don't know, maybe I'm projecting right now, but that feels like there's effort in that. I think you know, watching uh, feels more sincere because as you watch, you watch whatever comes. Does that watching, make sense? Noticing, uh -huh. observing, witness mm -hmm. consciousness. Uh huh. That's that's okay. accurate, and I think that. You know, a lot of times, here, here, I'll tell you one other thing that it was a miss for me. When I first started meditation, I had this expectation or want. It's like, you know, gosh, like, you know, minds are you know, my mind is going to stop or there's like this awakening. You know, you hear about people having an awakening experience or an enlightenment experience and everything was like out here, you know, that felt like this result or this um, chase. Yes, that's what I want. Yes, or this <laughs> chase of this something that was here. But as I was wanting this thing out here, I was missing <laughs> what was happening here. And that's the, that's the seduction. Um, that's maybe a bit of the illusion because uh, it's my experience that we wake up here now in this moment, you know? Um, and I think there's so many practices, like there's so many people from different that, you know, are listening right now that are from different cultures or different paths of life and different experiences. And that's the beautiful gift of this human experience is there's so many choices and paths home um, with inside of ourselves. And, you know, as we walk this path, I think we recognize that, you know, we've never really left home. <laughs> um, it's just a realization that, you know, this is the awakening. This is the gift. This is meditation, Mary B, right here, right now. This is us living our lives um, and appreciating and being present to this moment. Um, it doesn't get more beautiful than that until the next moment. <laughs> you know, I want to mention one more thing. If you're agnostic, if you're atheist, if you're a believer, what's so incredible about this is it's really irrelevant. You can still have a practice of meditation. Um, no matter what religion. I'm glad you're no matter what this because we religion. Had that was another question that came in on social media too, and I don't want to miss it. Someone wrote, isn't meditation Hindu? In transcendental mm. meditation, TM, you're given a Hindu holy word. I feel it goes against my Christianity. Can you speak to that? Mm. I, want, I want you to answer that because as someone who grew, in a grew up in a house where my parents' first question was often, is that against the church? <laughs> I can relate. Um, and I don't believe it is, but I would love mm. to know 
how well, you would address that? Uh, once again, I think if meditation is about coming uh, back to this moment, uh, if it's about, you know, experiencing what's inside of you, what's inside of us is, you know, it's a miracle. If we're a believer, then you believe that the creator created us. So if it's tuning into that miracle, um, gosh, I, I think that's complimentary. Mm. You know, I almost look at like if your prayer, it's like a filling up and meditation could be considered uh, as an emptying out. That's overly simplistic and that's not, you know, completely accurate. Um, but, you know, it's something that I have related to. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I feel like the two go hand in hand um, in such a beautiful, and meaningful way. I do too. I, when I was in college, I went through a real Thomas Merton phase. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thomas Merton, 20th century Trappist monk, Christian monk, theologian, mystic, author. I pulled a quote from him because I just think it's so beautiful. And also he uses the word contemplation in Christianity. You might hear it be called, mm -hmm. uh, you might hear it described as contemplative prayer. So contemplation, meditation, mm -hmm. prayer, any of mm -hmm. those words, I think whatever you're comfortable with, you can put to it. But uh, Thomas Merton in From New Seeds of Contemplation writes, contemplation is the highest expression of man's intellectual and spiritual life. It is the spiritual wonder. It is spontaneous awe mm. at the sacredness of life. I get emotional reading this. <laughs> of being, it is a vivid realization of the fact that life and being in us proceed from an invisible, transcendent, mm. and infinitely abundant source. <laughs> Amen. Contemplation is above all awareness of the reality of that source. <laughs> Whew. I think that's just... I think that's it. <laughs> I don't want to put words to it. Well, nor do I. <laughs> well, that was beautifully said and expressed. And once again, I think they all, you know, life is so beautifully vast. It isn't this or that. If I pray, I can't meditate. If I meditate, I can't pray. What's contemplation? You know, it all... You know, it's all this puzzle piece that comes together to make the greater whole. And, um, you know, for myself, uh, before I start a meditation, I always say thank you, you know. And uh, no matter, you know, whatever your religion or non-religion, wherever you come from, your background or your culture, just honoring that and praying in a way that's true for you. Or you can pray to the source that beats your heart. <laughs> You can, beloved divine source or beloved creator, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this life. Uh, thank you for surrounding me. Thank you for renewing me. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for filling me here now. Amen. Doesn't have to be, or it could just be, thank you. <laughs> you know, um, but for myself, I always start from that place. And that's just sincere for me. Let me talk to you about my expectations. Okay. I'd love to hear Knowing them. that we were coming into this conversation today, I picked a book off my shelf by your friend and Tony's, mm. Dr. Andy Newberg. Mm. He spoke at some of our conferences before. Yes. I opened up his little book called How Enlightenment Changes Your Brain. And I'm like, that's mm. what I want. This will make <laughs> me meditate. He writes, knowledge, wisdom, science, reason, oneness, unity, ecstasy, mm. awakening, bliss, liberation, insight, transcendence, transformation, self-realization, illumination, clarity, inner peace, holiness, revelation, God, mm. emptiness, selflessness. I'm leaving some out. Pure consciousness. Mm. He says throughout history, different scholars have used every one of these terms to define Oops. and capture the essence of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And then by proxy, meditation, mm -hmm. Some have said is the way to enlightenment, to this awakening. And so I sit on my little, I sit crisscross applesauce <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's go self-realized. Mm -hmm. And I see how I'm going about it wrong. And I also, I continue to learn from you. And I hope that, I hope that someone out there is smiling. Um, Tony, in fact, told us that our last episode, he thought, he listened to and he, and he cried his eyes out as Tony Robbins. If you know him, <laughs> you'll know. He's such a softie. He's such a softie. He's usually the first one in tears. And he said, you guys are funny, but you were a little serious in the last <laughs> one. He wanted to laugh. <laughs> so 
in an effort to to talk to hopefully not take ourselves too seriously i will also say that i will come to you and say like sage i'm feeling crazy cakes mm -hmm. in my mind mm -hmm. and to me that means like whether it's i'm feeling anxious or mm -hmm. scared or angry or frustrated and so i know i'm hooked in my mind mm -hmm. and we've done like you mentioned michael singer we were lucky enough to go to his um temple of the universe here in florida and he talks about like there's the external world and mm. then there's the thought world and then there's your emotional body so there's really these three things so if you're sitting there eyes closed your attention might go to something in the external world mm. a knock at the door your phone going off mm -hmm. it might go to a thought that you have like oh man did i lock the door where are my keys mm -hmm. thirsty a thought or a feeling like oh I'm still so mad that this thing happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. So those are the only three things. When you when he chunks them like that, it's like, okay, I have these three things to contend with. I should just be able to sit here, mm -hmm. focus on my breath, and be aware of the miracle of life. Mm -hmm. It's when you boil it down, it's like, wow, this seems pretty this is pretty basic. And then there's this little dictator, <laughs> this psycho tyrant <laughs> that is like, did you do this? You should do that. You should, you know, that's mm. just, and I hear it. And when I listen to the narrator that we all have, it's like, who is running the show? What is this mm. little voice? What do you make of that little voice? Do you have that little Of course punk? I do. Yeah, everybody has that little pumpkin in there. Of course. We are, I think once again, that's where we all meet. And I think that's the the real oneness of this human experience is that we all have that voice and it's only a dictator if you listen to it <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> you know and so uh you know whether it's you know open the door do this or do that you know if you're listening to it and believing the thought i think you know i speaking of this i i, I just have to share i know i've mentioned it um her name in the last podcast Byron Katie, uh, she has a process called the work and the four mm. questions. And uh, the work this is dot com. Mm -hmm, the work dot com. And this is another active form of meditation is there's four questions in a turnaround. And, uh, you know, you do the process of actually writing it down. Uh, it's called a judge your neighbor worksheet. And you meditate into it. And the gift of this is, you know, mind can work so quickly and, 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 and the narrative can happen so quickly that to slow mind down and to actually write it down, it's amazing because uh, it's your own consciousness guiding you through this process. And what's so unreal at the end of this process, if you stay with it, it always is so remarkable to me what I've missed. And I think that that's the gift of meditation. It's like, you know, when you talk about noticing, you, you, you we speak about watching. It's like, what are we noticing? It's like what we've missed. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, what we've missed. And what's so amazing about that, about, uh, you know, I, I've, gosh, I've known Katie. She's a very dear friend, by the way, and just a, a, a beautiful sister on the path. Uh, I started doing um, the work really seriously. I'd read her books. Um, but I actually wasn't sitting and doing the work myself. And I probably started doing that maybe about five years ago. But, you know, I, I meditated and noticed, I was willing to notice, I had a desire to notice what maybe I'd missed and just to see, is it true? And yes, inquiry really um, has been a, an incredible tool. Uh, and it's more of an, I wouldn't say an active form of meditation, but there is a process of answering questions and meditating into it, sitting with it, noticing what you're being shown, what you've missed. You're so vast in what meditation is, is what it could possibly look like, mm. which I love about you. With all the, you know, you and Tony have given seminars in service all over this globe. You have travel to india and china and malaysia mm -hmm. and you know in these places maybe that we think of like where meditation is born and it's done this way and you uh and even we have we have done our share of like you know alpha brainwave meditation mm -hmm. or kriya the nose the nostril isolation mm -hmm. nostril meditation yes um the the sometimes words get put to it vipassana or, or things that are almost are intimidating like tony says like 
in certain industries when there's this language and then you kind of get psyched out because you're like, I don't know what that means, mm. whether it's medical field or the financial field or it's the same thing. There's, I feel that even in, in when I step into this realm and you have this ability, like a lot of folks have wrote in and said, how do you know you're doing it right? Or what's mm. the way, do you do this kind of meditation? Do you do this kind of meditation? Mm. And you're kind of like, I had this conversation with my sister and I questioned this thought. And of course, this is about meditation, but I want people to see yes. like you often use the word inquiry. Mm. You talked about Byron Katie's The Work, which mm -hmm. is these four questions. So that's where the inquiry comes in. And many folks who teach meditation will say, you sit with your thoughts, you notice the thoughts that come up mm -hmm. and you question their validity, you question the truth of this, or at the very least, you look at that thought and you don't judge it. You don't try to should or shouldn't it. You just accept that mm. thought is coming in like a cloud through the sky. Mm. One of my outcomes of meditation would be, and people often promise this self-realization or, or seeing seeing of oneself, know thyself. Mm -hmm. Socrates, or as we call him <laughs> in this house, Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, um, you know, it says this know thyself. And what does that mean? And everyone else like can see us. Why can't we see ourselves? Yes. <laughs> and then we're the last to know. And so there's that that curiosity in me that's like, I really want to know what objectively what is out the outside experience of what I'm like that I know I'm not seeing because we're too in our own stuff or we're too busy defending as as mm -hmm you know, the human nature would often do. We justify, we, I'll speak for myself. When I sit there, oftentimes when I notice what my mind is doing in meditation, it will be building some defense or making some case for myself or justifying something I wish I hadn't done or wish I had done. Mm -hmm. When that coherence starts to happen or a greater level of harmony, all of a sudden mind or consciousness starts to notice something different. What I've noticed starts to translate in every you know waking experience or, or life just day to day is that as a circumstance comes up and maybe i feel hooked or i feel frustrated by a moment it's like okay this is just a thought <laughs> this is just a thought or whatever judgment it is and as i identify with that thought i suffer you know as i get a little distance and you know is this true or uh, take a breath and it's like oh my gosh you know maybe just notice in the moment before possibly what I missed. I think that's a that's the gift and the blessing of um, awareness, of alertness, of coming back to this moment, of being here now. Because um, it's so easy in a world of social media, in a world of with news, and there's so much bombarding us with, you know, uh, just so much bombarding us. Yeah. When's the last time you you know, listen to a podcast or read a book or ate a meal without checking your texts or looking at an alert or something. It's, we are so bombarded. So to have attention, again, I think that's another thing that's on my target when I talk about outcomes or results that I'm after in meditation. Um, it's that ability to just be where I am and where I put place my attention and not have something else dictate Mm -hmm. to me where to put it and you know i'm glad you brought up michael singer before and so i grabbed two books last night when i knew we were going to sit down and have this conversation today the other one is our friend michael singer's book mm. i can tell because i scribbled in here that i read it in 2015 mm. um and i have it's always great to go back and look at the notes you scribbled in here but one of the things i had written on the inside cover that clearly was something that i had gleaned from reading michael singer's book which to me and i've heard a lot of people say this Reading this little tiny book was the first thing that opened up this understanding in my mind of like, wow, that little voice in there. Mm. Why didn't, why haven't I thought about this? Why haven't I thought about her before? Mm. And so it, this book pointed that out to me and I had written in the inside cover. Now what I used to hold, now what used to hold me down becomes what wakes me up. Mm. Now what used to hold me down becomes mm. what wakes me up. So whether it's, it's a belief I had about myself that's that's mm -hmm. cycling in my mind for mm -hmm. the hundredth time or a belief that I've heard someone has about me or that I've made up that someone has about me that's cycling in my mind for the <laughs> thousandth <laughs> time. Now I'm able to 
catch that and that wakes me up to like hey Mm -hmm. that little punk in your mind (laughs) it's doing that thing again and you are taking orders from it like you're the boss like i really like what you said there it you're it's only a dictator if you listen to it rather Mm -hmm. than just like these thoughts are coming up Mm -hmm. let them be let them pass through do you have meditations where you're like oh mind was chatting away today or are you like do you still have those days where you're like huh a little weasel today well i don't know if it's a day but i have the moments where mind drifts and i call you know i invite my attention back to this moment here and yeah and just you know i'll follow my breath and uh you know you just it's just it's like no big deal hey you know come back here you know and it's like the kindness of you know, our, if you have a, a child and, you know, they're up to something or, you know, wandering off, it's like, sweetheart, you know, hey, let's, let's, it's come back or this way. It's, or yeah, kid, it's, it's a almost, being a little rascal. it's like how beautiful to extend and offer that graciousness to oneself, to ourself. Uh, just, you know, it's like no big deal. And, you know, what I've noticed, uh, or the gift of being in my forties is that life, you know, starts to have a different level of inward flow. Um, you know, simple things. This wasn't like something like, you know, a big thing. I, I was like, gosh, I have to do this or I can never do this. It was just a happening. You know, if I went on a plane before we'd go and if we were at the airport and you stop at, like I'd stop at a magazine store and I'd, you know, I'd buy a bunch of magazines and be flipping through and seeing, you know, who's doing what or who's wearing what or buying what or what the heck they were, or, or, you know, things about their relationship individuals. Mm-hmm. It's juicy. And, well, <laughs> it was until it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, it really was. And then all of a sudden, life became more interesting here and now rather than what was more interesting over there or externally. And that wasn't something I consciously thought, but I was reflecting last night and I was like, gosh, I don't know when that happened or why that happened, but it's a result. It was a reason. I guess that is a result. Yeah. You know, the having that extend to, you know, different level of mindfulness throughout my life uh, I just noticed myself making different decisions. You know, it took, you know, every morning I'd wake up and I'd check my phone and the news alerts when I was like, oh, you know, and it's like feeling all these things because I'm reading it and experiencing that. And so I took that off my phone. I turned the, uh, what do you call that thing? Alerts off my phone. Yeah. I'm not on any social media whatsoever personally. Um, and so it's, you know, it's given me the beautiful gift to have more time and space for um, myself. <laughs> yeah. And I think like that's the most, you know, is that self-love? I think that's a part of it. Well, I do think it's a result of your practice mm. of meditation. Mm. I feel myself, this gift that we have as human beings that mm. we're able to know that we're thinking and then to then realize like, wow, and then all these distractions are also coming in. How could I ever have room for the creativity that I want, the, you know, whatever it is that you want to do with your life. If it's just this distraction from one distraction to the next, internally or externally, I know enough to know that's not how I'm going to go do great things, Mm -hmm. you know? And so paring down the external distractions and then paring down the internal distractions. And that's, you know what? I, I made the same mistake. It's not paring down. Yes, that's beautiful awareness. So you just caught yourself. It's noticing. Yes. And then I think it pair it by it, just by noticing it almost pairs down. Well, what you just did is exactly in my in my experience of uh, mindfulness and meditation. You just caught yourself. Mm. That's what this beautiful life's about. You know, it's catching yourself. I mean, Mary, I'm not the most athletic human being on the world. True. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you are. And so, you know, you used to play soccer. And uh, if you're to kick your uh, the ball into the goalpost. What kind of ball? <laughs> <laughs> if you're to kick it into the goal, um, you know, I'm sure you didn't do that every time. And if you're at practice, you didn't do it every time. But then there's the times where you did. Most times. <laughs> no, I was kidding. With um, practice. With practice. Yep. And I think like, you know, gosh, we have such a huge expectation or am I, who am I say we have such a huge, I've had such a huge expectation and, you know, I dropped that and, uh, I dropped 
the notion of enlightenment, of awakening, because what life showed me was, gosh, that's in this moment. That's the only time that we can wake up is here now. You just did it. Yep. You know, I'm just looking at you. We're here. This is this is this beautiful life. And for those of you that are listening right now, you know, just take a look around. Take a look at your surroundings. You know, just see and what you've noticed maybe just the moment before. Feel your breath. You know, it's it's beautiful to be here now. And I think that that is the greatest, most powerful, one of the most powerful, profound gifts of meditation is coming, uh, not even coming to the moment because we're always in the moment. It's noticing it. I felt it even in just that moment. <laughs> It's like, it can happen in yes. 10 seconds. What did you feel? Just what did you experience? Said, like, I can't explain it. Like if I'm really, like you said, focusing and I'm holding on to do, to, you know, just like mm -hmm. what's going to come next. It's control. It's certainty. Mm -hmm. I realize that's what Tony would say. Mm -hmm. It is your driving need for certainty. Mm -hmm. I know, which I know is just a nice way to say your need for control, your illusion of control, some semblance of control mm -hmm. of this life that I have none of. Yes. And then to just get quiet. I feel my heart like take a breath in that. And also there's this uncertainty of what the next sound we might hear could be mm -hmm. or the emptiness of that. And that helps me to say, wow, I have no idea what I'm going to hear next or what I might notice next with my eyes or that. I feel like, oh, how how cool is that? And I mm -hmm. feel the need for certainty relax and i mm -hmm. feel myself settle into wow there's so much i'm not in control of and i, I can be okay with that mm -hmm. <laughs> and i can enjoy it not mm -hmm. just be okay with it i can actually really enjoy it and to me that's like we're sitting we're just sitting here yeah <laughs> and i have to manage my mind of like don't ask a stupid question <laughs> add value make sure that this is entertaining or that folks are getting things from this and then in a moment it's like you know what let's just have a conversation mm. let's just be real we're just sitting here people want authenticity <sighs> take a breath mm. yeah <laughs> you just feel like this little anchor to this moment mm. well that's beautiful that's <laughs> it i meditated I did it. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing um, your vulnerability and your honesty and sincerity. Um, I think it's a really beautiful thing as human beings, you know, as we drop uh, defense, um, you know, life is kinder, that next breath. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we don't need to be a certain way. I think that's the gift of this human experience. We get to be where I'm uniquely me. You're uniquely you, Matt. Hi, <laughs> I love your beard. I love who you are, how you express yourself. We all animate and express life um, uniquely. I think that's just so beautiful and freaking phenomenal. The, um, the alignment of where we all meet of this human experience and then just the you know beauty of how we all express. Um, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Even just like a 10 second, moment you can touch mm -hmm. up you can touch upon that that is a meditation you're making this really easy for us Sage <laughs> Robbins. thank well, you well that's the intent i think you know for those of you who are reading your questions and uh we can be so hard on ourselves and um i've been that human being so you know the intent here was just to simply share the experience and share many paths um that you know really all beautifully end us up in the same place and um, I don't know if it's meditation. Uh, I don't know if it's stage of life. Um, but there's no other place I'd rather be than here now. And uh, there's a freedom in that. And as I go forward, when I catch myself, if I'm future paced, uh, you know, bringing uh, my attention, my awareness, my uh, back to this moment, it just, um, no matter what's happening in the external world, it's like, hey, I'm alive. One of you know, looking at Mike, M Mickey Singer's book here. Uh, one of the beautiful gifts of um, that book was chapter seventeen, the untethered soul. Yeah, the chapter untethered 17. soul, chapter seventeen. And uh, you know, he talks about uh, you know how death is such an amazing teacher, 
And uh, you talk about, you know, we have no control. We don't know what the next sound is going to be. We don't even know if we're going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> None of us. We don't. None of us or an hour from now. And so, you know, we are here and life is a miracle and it's a gift to be alive. Uh, no matter what is happening, it's a gift to have this experience, to feel these sensations, to see what you're seeing, to, you know, all, all the these beautiful miracles that uh, to, of just life happening through us as us. Um, you know, I think that's the gift of that uh, reminder of the preciousness. And, and meditation has brought that more to life for me. <laughs> and when I forget, you know, that's the gift of this life. Waking up is in this moment, you know. Uh, that's the gift of recognizing that we're, you know, we're already home. Hmm. It's true. We're already home. Here we are. And I think that's the gift of the other side of a meditation is the feeling that you are able to experience that in your waking, out, out of meditation, mm -hmm. in your wake, waking moments, it's there with you. Mm -hmm. it's, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a meditator, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever listening? You're a meditator, aren't you? I think that's just, that's a beautiful statement. Yeah. And that's a beautiful reality because um, we all are. It's our nature. It's and we are meditating. Tone would say, some people say, I'm not getting results. And Tony mm. would say, you're always getting results. Mm. Yes. They just might not be the results that you want. In that same way, we're... <laughs>
in the human experience than this moment. And, uh, you know, we've mentioned many different, uh, by, you know, Byron Katie and Michael Singer. I also have to mention that tone, which is a beautiful uh, priming uh, experience and gratitude uh, meditation. a gratitude meditation. And at the beginning, it's, it's a guided meditation that you go through and, you know, uh, think of, you know, what you're grateful for. And it's, it's, it's a really beautiful process because it's, um, you know, once again, it's just guiding the attention. Uh, our attention is such a precious commodity. And to be able to guide it, invite it uh, to um, gratitude, to beauty, um, to what's beautiful and blessed in our lives, I think that's an incredible gift because there's so much distracting us to what's wrong, uh, what's off, what's wrong about us, what's wrong about mm -hmm. the world, what's wrong about, you know, um, and it's just beautiful to step. to an expanded perception um, and uh, to guide that process. So those of you that are interested, we'll make sure that we you know, yeah. have the link of that priming experience because it's incredibly profound and impactful for people. It's a great place to start, I think, <laughs> too, if you are just starting out Tony Robbins priming. Well, I hope that listening to this conversation has made you want to meditate has mm -hmm. made it i feel it i actually feel an excitement right now it doesn't feel like this like all oh, this thing i should do mm -hmm. it feels like this thing i really look forward to to doing <laughs> well uh you know well i'm not just, doing not doing a place yeah. to go it feels or like a place i'm excited to go mm -hmm. within without it's not it's not a doing Catch myself every moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that we can ever do. Yeah. You know, I'll share a couple uh, tips that I have found helpful. By the way, you do not have to do this. Um, there's no right and wrong in this process. And if you hear this and you think it's a little nutty, then please drop this part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so something that I've found to be helpful, right before I meditate, I'll stand up and I just shake. I'll shake my hands. I'll shake my arm, my whole body. And it's almost like going on linear, like I'm not doing it for anybody else, just, you know, and I'll say to myself, like, I release and I let go, I release and I let go. And it's just letting go of what's no longer needed in that moment. And I feel like that's like, it just gets, you know, uh, it just creates like an unbound space rather than sitting there and it's like being more in mind. I just feel like that alone. Um, and then as I sit down. I want to just mention first, it's mm -hmm. like, it's it's also goes back to exactly what Tony teaches that foundation is always physiology. Physiology, first. yes. So if you are someone who might be you know described as a little uptight, <laughs> I'll speak for myself. You got to just shake it out. It's the same mm. thing that we would do when people are like, "Why are you always jumping around at those Tony Robbins seminars? Yes, it's Why so is everybody true. jumping?" It's like, well, you jump around because there is a physiological your your body will have a response, a cascade of hormones just by movement. Mm. And so give yourself an edge just by shaking it out. Because mm. sometimes we've been sitting at a desk all day or you're carrying, your body is carrying. You know, there's the book that's popular, The Body Keeps Score. Our body holds on to a lot of things. So Sage is saying, step one, shake it out. Mm, shake, shake it out. Shake what your mama gave you. Nonlinear, she calls it, <laughs> which just looks a little crazy. I've seen you do it. It, it does look a little odd, a little strange. <laughs> um, but once again, this isn't for anybody but yourself. Uh, and by the way, I'm not doing that for a long period of time. Sometimes, I don't even know, maybe like 10 seconds. Yeah. And then as I sit down, I'll make the sound of ah, 
and I'll just be like, ah, and I'll continue doing that until I run out of breath. And there's something about the physicality and as well the sound that it's like, okay, for myself, um, it's easier to just drop into that space. Uh, You've suggested that with me too. And I also want to clarify. So it's not like an, uh, an ohm. It's like a sound, like whatever comes out of your mm. mouth. It's uh, just like, ah, uh, like it can very, ah, uh, yes. uh, like get, uh, if you have an emotion and it feels, it has like a tone to it, ah, uh, just mm-hmm. let that Release out it. of your body in the mm-hmm. same way that you're shaking it out physically, you're letting it out auditorily, mm. just another submodality to just get energy moving. And by the way, I don't do this if I'm just doing a two to minute meditation outside, <laughs> or I don't do this if I'm doing a nature meditation. I do this when I actually do a sit meditation. Um, and I just feel like it helps to create some unbound rather than bound energy. And it's just releasing, you know, okay, we're physical what? body, we're energetic, we're spiritual beings. It just, you know, it, it, it opens the channels. So you uh, shake it out, mm-hmm. you let it out. And then, and then you sit down in, in your position. What, tell me what your position looks like. Do you have to do I, something special with your, no, you can sit, just sit. fingers. No, not a bit. Okay. You can. Uh, once again, you know, if, if, if that's your path and that's what you've been drawn to and that's your practice, then beautiful. If you do certain postures, asanas, that's beautiful. If that's your, if that's what's true for you, if you want to just sit so that you're completely comfortable, once again, this isn't about perfection. This isn't about being in a precise way. This is it just simply experiencing. There's no right or wrong way to it. This is not a formula. This isn't something that you have to do. It's just experientially something that resonates for me. Um, I'd just love to tune in once again to the miracle and uh, the gift of life. That's the most sincere uh, and accurate experience and perception and reality. We are all so blessed, you know. Look at how we're supported we are. Whatever you're listening to this on or watching this, whatever device... What a miracle. (laughs) You know, if you're laying down or if you're walking or driving a car, what a miracle. Like we're so gifted with such a level of abundance. If you're sitting on a chair or, you know, sitting on the ground, like we are, you know, always uh, taken care of. And yes, you're lucky enough to have legs and supported. um, I think that is, um, you know, a lot of times missed. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and thank you for tuning in uh, to this conversation but also to yourself um, because there's no more beautiful place to be Um, so bless you on your journey and um, God bless thank you (laughs) looking forward to hearing from you all in comments and responses thanks for sharing this with us Mm -hmm. see you again soon we'll see you again soon bye bye